break, there you go. That was just a little improvisation. Tap. So, some people call that a calypso. Put it between two drums. Then a flame tap. Put in the bass drum. what happens there and all I've done with my feet is take what would normally be a two on two and four on the hi-hat like one and two and three. Calypso again in other words right left right both right left right both and taken that and put it on that. Okay, so. And there's nothing wrong with rim shots on tom toms. Very interesting sound. Double paradiddle is very important, coming back from the break. Uh, we know it best as right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Slide accentuation with the right hand. extra tap sometimes so it's just slightly changed and then you put it in on the you know African bell pattern you see. Uh, a lot of people call that an Afro-Cuban 6-8 when the bell pattern migrated itself to um, Cuba and uh, so the Afro-Cuban 6-8 because you're framing what we now n know as a double paradiddle which is usually in 3-4 like 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and but you're framing it in 6-8 so it's one and a two and a three and a four and a in triplets, but then one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So on, you see, and that's what goes on there. That's a wonderful and important rudiment is the double paradiddle, it's used in Celtic music, anything that's got that real bouncy 6-8 kind of thing. Even in your hip-hop, you know, you get punch. You know, all that busy sticking that um, started off with Vinnie Colaiuta back in the day, Steve Gadd even, and Billy Cobham before him, and um, probably more recently, Questlove, okay, who's the drummer for The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon maybe, or whatever, but um, he's most known as a New York rap producer 
and um, drummer for The Roots, who were out here a few years ago. So. <laughs> Double paradiddle. So what have I covered with my shows? Um, I've covered African drumming rhythms, um, simple arrangement for two drums. I don't sound too simple on the face of it, but it's essentially two part rhythms put together. You've got to remember that like when there's actually a drum circle happening, you might have a rhythm that is like in a con-con like this. <laughs> But the djembe player might be going, sort of thing, and the lower sounding djembe might be, reading it straight off the page. Grade three drum set manual, shameless plug for, <laughs> pardon me. And um, what happens is you put them both together, separated, right? Take the snares off, Chris. There's in the con con straight up for you. And um, that's what these rhythms give you, all this wonderful stuff to really explore. So as, I, as I've always been, or as, as I've been always going on about with these shows is, you know, get on the computer and start Google searching things that you haven't Google searched before, you know. Um, sometimes with music education, it's every man and woman for themselves sometimes. You glean it from, you know, you go about it yourself and hopefully this is just a teaser into um, what you can source yourself, you see. And that's what I hope happens, you know. So what happens, as I said, is um, simple arrangements, African drumming, it can become very complex and polyrhythmic. You can get um, five against fours, you know. <laughs> which I explained last week. A little patch like that's just on my computer. You know, I, it was like African rhythm or African shaker rhythm, number 23, I think it is, or something like that, on my computer, just on good old garage band. And um, I'm listening to it and I said, that's a five against four polyrhythm. Okay, you know sort of thing so y it's not just the domain of prog metal or whatever all this highfalutin stuff it's roots of centuries and centuries old so please check it out my name is chris quinlan i'll wrap the show up now it's melbourne musos that drum show and it's african drumming tonight um if you want to contact me it's melbourne musos at hotmail.com the website is melbourne musos.net and uh all my stuff somehow ends up on YouTube, which is, of course, Melbourne Yozos. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the show, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.